back to News Geelong and it's Wednesday evening as we turn to the action-packed world of Geelong sport and our own flying hawk, Nathan Curry. Good evening, Nathan. Thanks very much, Rollo. Well, I'm down here at Skilled Stadium to bring you all the latest about the Geelong Football Club. But before we do that, and I think this is the furthest we've ever travelled for a story, News Geelong's Cal are headed down to Mount Gambier on the weekend to bring us all the action from the GDFL Interleague. Tommy, uh, pretty disappointing start to the game. Obviously conceded a lot of uh, opportunities and uh, they obviously got onto a very good run in the first half. What did you say to the players in the second half to get them to... Uh, fight back the way they did. Yeah, look, um, one of the one of our uh, major problems in the first half was our work rate. Uh, we felt that we weren't getting to the ball first, and you know we, we've got a, we had a very quick side, very pacey side, but it's very hard to bring those players into the game if we're not winning the football around the 50-50 contest. So we made a special emphasis on winning the footy in the second half, and, and you know, and using the blokes with the bigger bodies to sort of get inside, you know, feed the ball out to those guys, and, and let them use their strengths. Blokes like Chalice and and Peely, you know, and Muir, really quick guys, and obviously you know if you create a little bit of space down forward. For guys like Edmondson, they can you know get on the end of some you know quality footy. You really got onto a good run, particularly in the last uh, start of the last quarter. You got some momentum. You thought you were going to snatch it. Yeah, look, it was. We found it hard to kick consecutive goals in the first half, and one of our, one of the key things was for us was to be able to kick consecutive goals. And once we sort of managed to do that in the third quarter, we, we thought we were a chance. We thought that you know we were running on top of the ground, and with having picked a very sort of uh, you know quick and. and uh, probably fit side I suppose it would be we thought they were always going to come home with a wet sail and must admit look halfway through the, the last quarter when we, you know, we managed to draw level we thought that you know, we were a very very good chance of uh, coming out of the top of them. Do you think the injuries to Lewis and Gurgic played a role late in the game? It was it was hard uh, use, uh, losing Louis so early because um, it, it affected our on-ball rotations. So we sort of had to go back to the drawing board there very early in the game. And obviously, Gurge, you know, he was he was uh, fantastic. He was one of our key focal points in the first half. I think may have may have even been our only goal kicker in the first half. Yeah. To lose him was a, was a big uh, you know, I suppose it was a, a big hurt, uh, hit for us to take. Um, but we always we always knew that you know we could always find someone else to step up there. And we'll you know fantastic with Dougie sort of stepped up there. Uh, Edmondson kicked five in the last half. Yeah, uh, just. Tell us about that decision. Once Gurge went down, just decided to throw him up. Uh, obviously, he's had a bit of a run there in previous years. Yeah, and he's done it a few times with us at East Geelong when, when Murph's been uh, injured or hurt, and we, we know we can back him in one-on-one. -on -one. He's good overhead for his size, and, you know, you can always go and put a big player on him, but then, you know, because Dougie's so nimble, he can sort of, you know, get out and get on his own, and uh, he loses him on the way back. So he tries to push up the ground pretty hard, and as you would have seen in the last quarter, and, he, you know, he, get, he hurts him on the way back towards the goals and gets on his own. Yeah. All right, thanks very much. No worries, mate. Thanks. Thanks very much, Cal. Well, now it's time to catch up with the Cats coach, Chris Scott. What do you think about Tom Hawkins' form at the moment? Oh, I mean, not a lot has changed other than, you know, the fact that Tom's not playing the way that, that he would like to be playing and, and we'd like to play, like him to be playing. But we've got really high standards um, and we're going to completely support Tom. Yeah, he's important to our long-term plans. Um, but, you know, he's... And he's not dominating the games, uh, games the way we think he can. Oh, Alan Tuvey thinks he attacks the ball all right. <laughs> yeah, uh, Lloyd, Lloyd makes some really good points. I, I enjoy his commentary. Um, Tom probably looks like he's a little bit in between at times at the moment. That's definitely something we're working on. But yeah, as Alan Tuvey knows, Tom can attack the ball really hard. Um, his attack on the contest is not the biggest problem. He's not he's not holding his marks the way that he can. Um, but no, we're not panicking with Tom. He, he is still a very young key position player who's going to be an important part of our plans. Cameron Mooney and Brad Ottens are carrying injuries at the moment. Is that something you'll have to manage for the rest of the year? Definitely with, with Moons it's a case of managing his workload. So it's, it's less games, not more. But there will come a point in time where we need to make a decision um, if he hasn't played a lot of footy. But at the moment we're happy with the way it's tracking. Um, as I said, it's, it's management of his overall load as opposed to, to match conditioning. Finally, Scotty, how is Nathan Vardy feeling after that big bump he copped to the head on Saturday night? He's a bit stiff and sore in his neck, yeah, but we'll need to wait a little bit on, on that. But we're, we're hopeful because he, he played really well. Um, we'd like to see him um, front up again. Yeah, didn't expect anything else. You know, he's been doing that at VFL level and that, that's what we expect of all Geelong players. And, but, yeah, it was... A, it was a good sign that he was clearly affected, um, but came back and had a real, um, uh, made a real contribution to the game. Thanks for your time, Scotty. We'll catch up with you on Friday night again. But until then, it's back to you, Rollo. Thank you, Nathan.
and congratulations to all the local leagues that participated in the VCFL interleague round of matches for 2011. Although, one message for all local footballers. Always be prepared to play the best level of football you can and do not excuse or abuse the privilege of being selected. And now to the latest Geelong weather information for the next six days. It's a very good evening to our own sparkling Lani Salathiel. Good evening, Lani. Thank you, Graham. Welcome to winter after the coldest autumn in 14 years as we look at what's in store for us over the next week. Tomorrow, Thursday, surprise will be mostly sunny with an expected top of 19. Friday will be a cloudy day with some patchy rain on the way in the morning and a top of 17. For the weekend, Saturday will also be cloudy with scattered showers and a top of 15. And Sunday will continue to be a cloudy day with some patchy rain later on and an expected top of 15. And to start off the first full week of winter, Monday will be a cloudy day with some scattered showers and the chance of thunderstorms with a top of just 12, a cool day there, while Tuesday will continue to be cloudy with scattered showers and a top of just 11. And today we saw areas of fog and patches of light frost early in the morning, clearing to a sunny day and we had a top temperature of 17. And that's the weather outlook for the coming week. Have a pleasant evening. Don't forget to turn on the electric blanket before bedtime this evening. In the meantime, it's back to you, Graham. Thank you, Lani. And thank you for being with us on News Geelong. Caitlin Lamond, happy 21st birthday. Remember, take your time and smell the flowers. From all the team at News Geelong, have a pleasant evening and a very good night.